Hey guys, uh, how's it going? Uh, I think it's back to a conversation I had uh, someone a few years ago. It was uh, right at the start of university. You know? This person happened to be uh, the head of one of the campus political clubs uh, of, uh, of the left sort of uh, position. And the first thing she said to me was, um, how can someone like you, who looks like you, being the invitation, uh, possibly be right wing or not support our side? We're the side that takes up the minority, we're the side that takes up the group. And what quickly became obvious over time is that there is an undercurrent in our culture today to see minorities as special interest tribal groups that are homogenous, that think around, along similar lines, and that need the protection of Big Brother to be able to stand up and assert themselves in our society. When the fact is, that's not the way our society works. The reason why our diverse and multicultural society works so well is because our ancestors came here from all corners of the world because they love the values that our society holds dear. They love our institutions, they love our way of life, they love free speech, they love the fact that you can criticize the government, insult the hell out of any idea, and not worry about being thrown in jail or fined. But what direction are we actually heading in now? When we have the former Human Rights Commissioner, Julian Triggs, going on the public broadcast, paid for by your taxes, and she's sitting there and she nonchalantly suggests that we should extend laws that make it a crime to offend someone to religion. You have a human rights former commissioner defending effectively anti-blasphemy laws. If you're an atheist sitting in Saudi Arabia or Iran and you want to flee your country so your head doesn't get chopped off for expressing your opinion, how does that make you feel? And what are we doing in the meantime when Jim Mullen, a man who has risked his life for this country, when he doesn't even say something racist, doesn't even say something offensive, when he shares a video of a news story that's not being covered that much, that just happened to be hosted originally on the far right uh, Facebook page, he gets torn into pieces. Like as a sacrifice to the country means absolutely nothing. That's the direction that we're heading in. And the problem with the sort of you know, fake outrage you know, the sort of culture and the laws that it propagates is that it doesn't actually focus on standing up for minorities. It just makes a few people getting high off their own flatulence and two-rack and drinking champagne feel good about themselves. That's all it bloody well does. If you want to stamp out racism, drag it out in the open, beat it to death with a stick. Show these people that, you know what, we're not scared of you. Come out, speak up, make yourself look like idiots. You know, show us your sexual frustration or whatever's driving you. And that is genuinely the best disinfectant. And there was a hashtag on the, in the left-wing Twitter sphere last year, a hashtag freedom of speech. And the idea was um, you would share an instance of racism that you've been through, and uh, you would basically be saying, oh, you know, when stuff like this is happening, how can we talk of getting rid of race hate laws? But what was interesting is all the stories they mentioned were stories of being bullied or bashed, being yelled at on the street, I've been through that myself, and there was no ATNC to protect me. There, there were laws in this country against harassment, against assault, against even offensive language. These are laws that actually carry criminal penalties and are effective against instances of actual abuse, actual harassment. The only people, or most of the people that ATNC actually targets, are journalists, are cartoonists, are political commentators, are people who committed the sin of having the wrong opinion or of saying, expressing a valid opinion in an edgy or provocative manner. We had uh, Bill Leak dragged through the legal system in the last year of his life simply because he made a provocative cartoon. Now, whatever you think about that cartoon, shutting him down and saying you're not allowed to open your mouth is not how you deal with that situation. And for all his years of service to public life, we rewarded him by dragging through that and his family in the last year of his life. How is that fair? And it's not just the at &C law here. Defamation is a big problem. We're one of the only Western countries where you can be sued for defamation for writing a roasty restaurant record. That actually happened. And uh, you know these, I like to call them public health Nazis. They collect taxpayer money given up by the government and they often come up with these newfangled solutions. Let's have a sugar tax. Let's tax sugar, let's tax alcohol, let's tax soda, let's tax meat. 
Exactly. They, they get paid by the government to find ways to make us feel miserable. And on top of doing all that, they call themselves doctors. When what they have is a doctorate in sociology, sometimes a doctorate in gender studies. And if you were so much as to open your mouth and say, this person is not a real doctor, well, good luck to you, because you could be sued for thousands and thousands of dollars. And you know what? You're not going to have a lawyer in your corner. They will, because there is a machinery of ideologues in this country who are willing to take their time off chasing ambulances to go in and to put you on the line, because they want to shut you down. They're that determined. Some people will say, wait, hold on, there is a defense in the law, Section 18D, and stuff. If you make a comment in the, in the public interest, then that's okay. But the problem is, you still have to go to court and justify to a judge why your freedom of expression is valid. And for most people, I don't, know about you, but I don't have the time and the money to sit through a court process just to justify the comment that I'm making. This is not a free society. This is not the way things are meant to work, and the process is the punishment. You had students in Queensland University of Technology who dared to make a comment, that, dared to speak out against racially segregated sections of the computer lab in their university, and they got dragged to a three-year-long legal battle. And their legal fees were up hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that complainant was so sensitive, she filed for bankruptcy at the end of it. She couldn't even pay. Sorry, can you repeat that? She filed for bankruptcy. So they didn't even see the money come back from her. This is injustice. That's the reason why I'm up here proud to speak out. It's because I'm sick and tired of laws that tell people like me, I'm weak, I need big brother to speak up for me and to fill in the blanks. I can't stand up for myself. Yeah. I won't take any of it, I'm not sure any of you. Thank you. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.